Hey everybody, it's Max here at Modern Classics. Today we're taking a look at something a little bit different than what we're used to, because it's French. This is a Citroën, or a Citroën. Uh, this is the DS. It's actually an ID. We'll get into the specifics in a little bit, but what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna do a walk around, talk about the exterior conditions, some of the interesting features of this car, because there's a lot of them. Then we'll look at the interior of it. And then we'll do my favorite part, which is the test drive. And in this test drive video, we've got something special to show you about this car. I'm excited to show it off. Without further ado, this is a 1971 Citroen. Uh, this car, I did not import. I, the, a friend found this out of Washington. I believe in Spokane, Washington, it was fully restored to the condition that you see it in today. Uh, I don't have any documents on it, uh, but I have had it mechanically inspected and gone through. Uh, say goodbye to these tires. These are crusty, so I have some new tires on order. Um, what else? Uh, the thing runs really, really well. It's super quirky and fun. I took my mother out to dinner in it last night. Uh, a lot of old cars you kind of have to question and typically that you know ladies would not prefer to be in a car but th for some reason the ladies seem to absolutely love this thing uh, clearly it's finished in this interesting color this is a factory color uh, it's had one repaint all the chrome is in excellent condition for its age there's so many fun features on this thing there's so much style uh, you've got these cool turn signals positioned up high uh, what else could I tell you about this car it's got a very complex hydraulic suspension system um, we'll get into that this one works flawlessly but fun fact you can actually drive this car on three wheels so if you get a flat on one of your wheels you can swap them around and I think it'll drive around with its rear leg up kind of like a dog that has to go to the bathroom or something goofy this car is just as goofy as I am um, it's let's see what else can I show you just cool design everywhere i mean it's so french and at first i had a little bit of bias as you know i import cars from italy and i'm partial to those vehicles but this thing is just so darn cool the exterior paints in really really good condition you know it's an older repaint so there's a few spots um you know just some of this around the edges uh what else um you know this is an aluminum hood it's massive so getting it for the gaps to be proper is a bit of a challenge. Uh, there is a little thing that I wanna show you over here. Just a little nick in the paint. It seems like somebody may have hit a cone or something. Um, but oh, other than that, the paint reflects really well. There's no spots where it's, it's fading. The windshield or the windows all roll up and down effortlessly, super cool. Uh, just check out how big that rear seat is. You know, this was kind of a luxury vehicle in France at the time, and it feels that way today. You'll see when we hop in it, it's super comfortable. And the ride quality is just amazing. What we have to do is, I know some of you guys like my bump test. You know, when you hit a bump, and we've got some big bumps out here, you can hear rattles in a car, and we take it for granted when we're driving, you know, a new vehicle. Uh, but you get in an old car, and you can tell a lot uh, about the vehicle's condition when you hit the bumps. Well, this is the nicest bump mobile <laughs> in town. Uh, take a look at the headliner and the lights also work, those pillar lights when you open up the doors. The seats have been reupholstered, that's for sure. The doors have too in the matching fabric, it seems. Um, you will see a little bit of patina on some of this stuff, but it doesn't affect functionality. What else is going on? You can't neglect the one arm steering wheel. It's so goofy, but cool. This is uh, one of the most mass produced cars, especially for France. They made a ton of these. I believe they started making them, uh, designing them in the 50s. Uh, which is where you get the Jetson styling. And then they were in production from the 60s to the 70s. I think 76 or something was the last, the last one they were, that they made. Here's your proper VIN tag. This car's being sold on a clean title. There's no brands on the title, so um, no issues with that if you want to take it to your state. Uh, it does have seatbelts. Somebody put seatbelts in here, and that's uh, there's four seatbelts in here, so that's really nice. My mom last night was thankful to see that. We've got quite a bit spare, just a few spare parts and things back here. 
There's, I haven't really found any areas of rust on this car. I think because it's lived in Washington, uh, it's in really, really good shape. They preserve metal pretty well here in the Northwest. I'll open up the hood. To open the hood, you have to go on each side and there's a little metal lever that you pull. So I'm gonna have to go to this side too. It's a bit of a process. Pull the lever. And get ready to see one of the most strange engine compartments that you'll ever find. Okay, number one, just to put the hood up, your stop, it's different. You have to pull it out of that little rubber grommet and then it goofily folds down and then you slide it in there and there it sits. So you've got everything you could need, including the spare tire up here. Um, it is a little four cylinder engine and it's actually pretty peppy. It's a four speed column shift. The clutch feels really good. Uh, let's see, so everything in here that's green has to do with the hydraulic system for the suspension. And like I said, it's mechanically very sound. I had my mechanic go through it. Uh, we're doing new brakes. Oh, on the note of brakes, come check this out. You'll hear the brakes dragging a little bit and it's because right here, there's the rotor. It's an inboard braking system. Typically you have your brakes at the rims. Well, here it sits right by the transmission, and uh, unfortunately, after some time, it'll the engine by nature heats up the rotors and they start to warp. So I have new rotors on order, and of course, new pads as well will be installed soon. Uh, I just had the carb adjusted and totally cleaned out. It runs so well. Um, and that on that note, in fact, we should probably take it for a ride. I'll start it up so you can hear the engine. And then I'll get out, shut the hood, and then we'll meet me outside and we'll take it for a spin. I haven't had to put this car on a battery charger or anything. It seems to hold a charge just fine. Okay, I'll see you outside. So there's a few fun things inside that I'd like to tell you about. Uh, number one being, everything's very simple. It's pretty familiar, but it, there are th a few things in different places. Here's your big e-brake lever down here on the left. This car also has a push start button. I never use it. I've never been a fan of those anyways. I'm not in a Formula One car, so. Uh, left, the radio. actually does come on. Uh, your choke is here. Fan. Fan does blow. Here are your adjustments and I think this changes the direction. Honestly, I don't know. I live, you know, Boise is a very nice moderate climate. Here's what's really fun. Here it says stopping distance on a dry road. So when we drive, we set off. Now, if you're not familiar with how uh, column shift works, it does have a clutch. Put my foot on the clutch, put this up, put it into first. Oh, got to release the e-brake. You push this button. It's actually pretty darn ergonomic. This car is surprisingly well thought out and civilized, now, which is why, uh, you know, I got to give credit to. It was a very successful car. Uh, they sold a lot of these. Uh, your wipers work. That's a nice safety feature. You'll hear that whining. That's coming from those darn brake rotors. Uh, so I've got those sorted out. Let's go hit some bumps.
there's our first bump. Feel this. So smooth. I'm running a stop sign. We're gonna go hit one more bump. But just feel how this thing glides. I mean, it, there's third. You can notice the stopping distance is actually increasing. And what it will show you is it's saying how, how far away you need to start pressing the brake. It's totally bizarre and it actually makes a lot of sense. And let's hit fourth. You'll notice that the RPM gauge is not functioning. Um, I haven't looked into that. I've watched it function and then sometimes it won't function. So it says electronic on there. I'm assuming it's electronic. Maybe it's not cable driven. Hence why it is uh, intermittent. Okay, we're coming up on another bump here. There's that brake rotor giving us a nice French song. Okay, here we go. Nice, I'm telling you, if you want a car that can take bumps, this is it. It's so goofy, but we have to understand, in France, when this car was designed in the late 50s, their roads were no way near as nice as ours are today. Uh, and so they had to, they built cars that could handle rough terrain. And it totally makes sense. This is a car that you could probably take on a cobblestone road, and you would feel like you're in a Rolls Royce. All right, so I know this video is getting a little long. Bear with me. We've got one more cool thing to check out. I always thought that this would be a questionable thing. You know, the French aren't really known for uh, bulletproof uh, Mercedes-like engineering. However, uh, this system, I've read into it, it's actually a pretty robust system and pretty flawless. I know people have rallied these cars and taken them, uh, taken them great distances without any issue, major issue. That brake, I'm telling you, we'll get that fixed. It's going into the shop on Monday. Um, but it's actually a very reliable system. So uh, let's hop out, get a side shot, if you will, and I'm gonna show you something cool about the suspension. Ah, this is a fun treat. Why don't we get a, f I'll show you how this is done. So let's get a good view on that. Here's how you lock the car. So this is how you, you pull that in, and that, well, okay, so that's lock, so it jams this. You push forward on that, that unlocks the car, and then, oh, I've got it backwards. There you go. And then you push out, very quirky but fun once you get the hang of it. Kind of feels like you're opening up an old refrigerator. So let's go from the other side so we get a nice backdrop. So the car has to be running for this system to work, but what we're gonna do is and then we'll lift it back up takes a moment to engage sometimes I give it a little help with the engine There it is. <laughs> very quirky, very cool. And I just love, I have to do it again. Hold on. <laughs> I mean, how cool is that? Uh, some people always ask about the gaps in the, door, in the body panels. Why are they so large? Well, a lot of it was built, um, I believe this panel is plastic. No, that's metal. Remember, this is the ID, not the DS. This is the base model car. So uh, a lot of the systems that were hydraulic on the DS, including the steering, the uh, brakes, 
this car doesn't have that. It's actually mechanically controlled. So this being the ID model is actually a little more forgiving than some of those more complex. Also, it's more affordable. So you can have a lot of fun for not a lot of money with this car. It is for sale. Uh, my name's Max. You can give me a call 208-720-8854. I'd be happy to sell it to you and tell you more about it if you have any questions. I have a ton of undercarriage photos, ton of other photos on it. Um, so inquire on those. I'll also show you all the service reports and every uh, and service bills, everything I've done to the car to make sure that it's roadworthy. My website's www.modernclassicautos with an S dot com. Uh, you can also follow me on Instagram, Maximilian Billion Trillion, and uh, give me a subscribe. A lot more videos to come. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.